Hi everybody, it's Martin at Flickin' Feathers again today. I'm tying a slightly unusual dry fly for you, but it's a very good one. This is uh, Oliver Edwards Upside Down Done, or USD. Upside Down flies are really good, especially for picky fish. But they're no maybe as popular as they could be. As always, I'll put a materials list in the description, along with a link to the Patreon page for anyone that wants to support the channel. Get access to the members only content as well as being entered into the giveaways. You can also subscribe, hit the bell button so you get notified of the new videos. That's all very appreciated. Right, I've put my hook in my vise. This is a partridge Swedish dry fly, it's a K3A, um, but these are discontinued, right? They don't make them anymore. Gamma Katsu do an equivalent. Uh, although it's got a slightly more curved shank um, if you google Gamakatsu cripple hook um, that should take you to it this is a size 18 of this hook model um, but, it's, but they're big hooks this is really more like a 14 um, I've got a pack of B170s on my desk I'll just to give you an idea, here's a size 16 B170 held next to it, so you can see it's, it's a, although that's an 18, it's a meaty big hook and I'm tying basically a large dark olive or a spring olive so for my thread I'm using Uni 8 Ot and Olive when it comes in the shank until I'm about halfway between the point and the barb now I'm going to stick roughly to all these pattern um, but by all means you can adjust it so the tail I'm using some badger hairs just got to grab three they'll not be lined up off the skin unfortunately it's a, it's a bit of a pain but they're, they're quite durable on the fly let the tail doesn't break off and all I like to do is when I've got my three hairs I just pull them in so they're the same length maybe we check and then you can tie them in as your tail tail length well length of the fly length of the body at the back Catch that off on the on the bare shank. I turn on the shank, and I'll come up underneath just to splay them, and we'll see how they want to sit. I might just to help lock them, display them a bit. I'll take a a wrap through. Just had to lock them. I'll do. Now, I'm not worried about the centre tail there is, as we look at it, is dropped. But if you think about the fly, it's going to be on the water in this attitude. So I don't want to lift the tail as you know, would on a standard dry fly. So I'm going to move my waist. Just tidy up. Now, I use super fine, and I'm going to start with some brown olive, and I'll take a wee pinch of blue wing olive, which is a slightly darker green, greenier olive, and the end of the dubbing noodle nearest the hook is going to be all brown olive and the blue wing olive stuff is towards me I don't know how well you can see that but it's quite light, it's that light browny olive towards the tail and then it darkens up this end into the blue wing olive I like that sort of colour transition that you get so I'm just going to Take that back, get it started, 
and then really tighten up my dubbing and build a nice body and then if you let the wrap slightly overlap you've got a nice sort of taper and then as you come to the knuckle it will start to darken at the start of that bend there obviously you don't need to do that I just like the I like the fly darkening a wee bit at the front quite often the natural insects are a bit darker towards the front Hackle I'm using sort of medium blue done dry fly knight and I'm tying it so that when I wind it go back I've exposed some bare stem and I'm going to tie it in so that when I wind it the hackle cups up the way and I'm going to leave a few mil of bare stem, maybe two or three mil, so that when I start winding, it helps if the hackle fibres stick out in the correct attitude. Now, I'm going to take some more of the Blue Wing Olive, super fine. And this is the uh, Wopsy stuff, if you're looking for the colours. But use whatever you like, you know, this is ideal for any of the mayfly species. I'm just going to dub the rear half, or the rear portion of the hump, right up to the top. And I can let that, let it be a wee bit more bulbous to support the deer hair wing. And it'll come in, we're ready to tie the deer hair. So, I'm using short fine deer hair. Um, Comparadun hair will work if it's long enough. Any any deer hair that you like, really. Uh, and this is just dyed done. You could use natural, I don't think it would make much odds. So I'm going to take a bunch that's a bit thicker than what I think I need for the wing, because you'll lose some when you clean it. Take a wee comb. Get the under fur and the broken fibres out. Make sure it's nice and clean. I've got to stack this, so I'll put it in the small stacker. Make sure there's no any broken ends. I'm going to stack it again. It just wasn't quite. It was not quite as I wanted it. Better. You're ready to tie in your wing. Wing length. Well. Like most mayflies really, you're looking body length. So about that. Check it again, get it in. And I mean, as you can see the a rotary vice is a real boon for this part, although you don't necessarily really need one to tie it, but it will help you out. That looks okay. Just got to come around, trim all the waist nice and close. Up. 
and what I like to do is I'll come up and I'm going to put a half hitch in right at the base of the wing because right, your thread will want to run down this slope and I find it much easier to wind the hackle when the hook's in this direction winding it like this is much more difficult for me for some reason so just lift your wing up don't worry about how it sits and take a turn of the hackle I like the first turn to be right on like the I'll just use my cup of needle to be like right in on the elbow of the this bend coming out the wee hump and I reckon I mean it's up to yourself but three to four turns is probably enough don't worry you don't want to come too hard against the wing because if you do what happens is you kick it up too much and come in I'll catch this on my side and I'm going to try to avoid trapping any hackle be a bit fussy but once you're in you're in and then trim away another tiny pinch of dubbing and then I'm going to pull everything back I might turn it this way because it will be easier for you to see, I hope. I'm just sweeping everything back and I'm going to dub from the eye back towards the wing. Keeping everything out of the way and then I'll just run my thread back over the dubbing and I can whip finish. Watch your wing there, that's... Oh, come on. Let finish. Support the hook. These are very light wire hooks. Another hook finish. See how you're sitting, that looks pretty good. And the last thing is I'll just come in and the hackle that's sort of in the in the kink, just going to take that away so that you get a nice footprint. Don't want any kind of really coming down. A few fibres coming down below is fine because as, as long as they're sort of spread out, because as the fly lands, the old flex in, in the film and help support it. And that's it, that's the upside down done. Or USD. It's, it's, it's a great fly. Um, especially, I mean, you'll get, if you're getting refusals and it's you're sure it's not your drift, maybe they're a bit pressured, the fish there, or whatever you're fishing. Offering them an upside down fly, which is a different footprint, you know. The fly floats like this and the fish sees basically the hackles, the back of the abdomen touching in the tail and then the shape of the wing up above. It's a very effective, 
very effective fly. So, I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to give me a thumbs up below and subscribe to the channel. Tech lines, guys. Bye.